Hello everybody, it's Gary to you, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend episode of Breath of the Wild. There's actually a shrine over here that we haven't finished yet. There's no reason why we didn't do this sooner, but I honestly kind of forgot about it. And it's really silly, because you'd think this would be a huge hint that there would be something there, but I forgot about it, so... Yeah, we're being taking care of this right now, and I'm honestly kind of embarrassed that we forgot about it, because done. It's a very obvious location on the map, and B, this is one of my favorite shrines in the game, so I have no idea how I could have forgotten about that. But in my defense, there are like 400 plus uh, pages of notes uh, for this Let's Play, so some things are bound to slip through the cracks every now and then. But if we go down here, we can see that there's a shrine down here. And I really like the coloring of it. You could definitely tell that this was like a submerged area at one point, and the shrine was underwater, which thankfully the water level... Uh, it, that bird is in midair. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted mid thought because that bird was just running me floating right there. But yeah, it's kind of a good thing that the shrine water level has changed so that we can actually access it now because the game is rude enough to not let us be underwater. That's unfortunate. You sit for the shrine. I am Yanaga. In the name of the goddess Hylian, I offer this trial. Shatter the heavens, Yanaga Shrine. So, this is a pretty interesting shrine. It's also one of my favorites because we can already see where they're going with the, with the giant stone block and the bombable thingy right there. And we look upwards, we see that thing up there as well. So, what we want to do, we want to. Not do that. I thought we can throw it high enough, but apparently Link isn't that strong. So we're going to want to place that down there. And you can already see where we're going with this. So this area right here, I gotta say, this is actually one of my favorite shrines right now because it reminds me so much of Tower of Terror. And it's kind of interesting because I have an interesting history with Tower of Terror. So I wasn't that fond of the ride when I was a kid. Like I'd go on with my sister if she really wanted me to. But well, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I forgot to use the stasis thingy. Well, I didn't forget to use the stasis thingy. I forgot to blow up the thing while the stasis was activated. Actually, what I mean? Yeah. Let's go like that. And I actually use the bomb thingy so that the momentum can actually go high and things like that. So, activate that. And then when the platform rises to the heavens, blow up the boulders. So yeah, my sister would want me to go on Tower of Terror, and it was kind of like a... Um, it was kind of random throughout the day whether or not I felt up to it. Like, I would go on it with her, but then I'd, there'd other be days where I'd be like an absolute chicken and things like that. So, yeah, it was kind of an interesting... It was kind of an interesting situation, but... Lately, I've gotten a new appreciation for the ride because, like, one of my friends at Galaxy's Edge, um, like, she absolutely loves it. It's her favorite ride ever. Um, and there was a day where we went to the park together, and, like, we went on it. Like, it's really fun, because we went on Rock and Roller Coaster first, which is my favorite ride. And then we went on Tower of Terror, and on the way over there, we actually bumped into another friend. And so, like, we all went together. It was so much fun. It's kind of fun, because, like, the thing I was really nervous about with Tower of Terror was that feeling of being dragged down very quickly. But... Right in the right, I think the more fun part of it, honestly, is the feeling when you're going upwards and it kind of feel like you're getting pushed into the seat. That's just such a fun feeling. And they have a similar feeling in Rise of Resistance. I won't spoil it right now. Well, actually, I kind of have to because, well, I don't, I, don't know, I don't know how I'm going to do this in editing. I want to show a video clip of it on screen, but I don't know. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that the first time that I wrote it, there's one part where like, there was like a sudden drop and it was so fun. But I didn't see it coming, so the first time that I wrote it, I screamed like a little girl, and I have footage of it because I recorded the first time I went on Rise of Resistance. It was such a fun feeling. That's one of my favorite rides ever, but I don't think anything's gonna top Rock and Roller Coaster for the longest time. Hooray for Disney parks! Seems to be a common topic in videos recently. I wonder why. So I believe that up there is what the guy was talking about a moment ago, so... Let's go off and explore that area, shall we? Might be a good idea if we actually had, you know, good equipment for swimming before we continue onwards. Alright, so, well, you know, 
this is something I'm just thinking about. So, you know what would be a really cool thing they could do for Breath of the Wild 2? So, what if they had the ability to, like, uh, save the um, different equipment slots? So, like... <clears throat> so, like, what if you had, like, a specific combination of outfits that you liked, and you could just, like, press a button to quickly map, uh, swap over to that? It'd kind of be like the one um, outfit wheel thingy in Emma Crossing. Basically, you'd do that, but in Zelda. I think that'd be pretty cool. It's pretty interesting because, like, Breath of the Wild 2 is coming along pretty soon, and it's especially weird to think about the fact that the wait for that game has been pretty close to the wait that it took between Zelda U's first announcement and Breath of the Wild releasing, so it's kind of weird that it's getting close to around the same time, but it hasn't felt like it. So, oh, this is a stone talus. All right, yeah, I'll fight you. Why not? I, I feel like picking a fight with a muscular rock guy. Hey, <laughs> I guess you could say this guy has rock hard abs. <laughs> Funny joke. All right, we'll continue to find this guy. And I'm just, I'm pretty excited for Breath of the Wild too. Like I haven't really talked about the videos that much because like I remember when Zelda U was coming out. Like, it seemed like um, nearly every Skyward Sword or Wind Waker video was talking about how excited I am for Zelda U and the possibilities and things like that. I haven't really done it with Breath of the Wild 2 that much, though, and I don't know why. I am I am looking forward to that game, but it doesn't really talk about a whole lot of videos that much. So, there are a couple things I hope they do in that game that are different from this one. Wow, that really took away the HP very quickly. <laughs> Hey, remember that time when the stone tiles used to be a big threat? Neither do I. <laughs> Where was I going with this? Yeah, Breath of the Wild 2. It's pretty exciting. I kind of want to go. I don't kind of don't want to go into too many ideas I have uh, that I hope that they do for the game in this video because a lot of things that I hope they change will kind of actually spoil this game. So that's the topic we'll save for another day. Octorok right there, if you want to fight it. I don't feel like fighting it because we just took on a stone talus. We don't need to pick another fight today. Owie! Well, fine then. I see how it is. You're, you're, you're like, whoa, am I too good to fight you or something like that? How dare you? I'm sorry, Octorok. I didn't want to have to hurt your feelings, but I, I don't want to fight you. Go away. Stop throwing things at me. Alright, so I believe after you take care of the dragon scale with Farouk and things like that, the uh, rain will happen not quite as often in this region. That was poor grammar, and I'm not going to reword that sentence. Of course, after I say that, it starts raining again. Because of course it does. Actually, it's a different side quest that changes the rain in this area. I don't know what I'm talking about. We'll take care of that in due time. But that's for right now. We're we'll going over this way because we're getting pretty close to our destination. Uh, that is a that is a metallic uh, problem. Okay, we we seem to be good now. We also have the rubber helmet, so it's not quite good as good as the thunder helmet. But if we do get struck by lightning, it should be a breeze. I believe this was the area that the guy was talking about a moment ago. So, do I want to waste another revised skill on that? Yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that. No. No, 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 no. That was not, that was not a good idea. I was going to try to climb up the wall and just kind of brute force my way up there, but the jump arc was way lower than I thought it was going to be. So, yeah, we're aborting that miss and going around the long way and actually doing this the way that might not be stupid. We didn't have to climb anything at all. Wow. <laughs> so now we're up in this area. So you may be wondering where the point of this place is. Well, that's a good question. Because I'm also wondering the same thing. Because I don't remember exactly off the top of my head what this area is for. Alright, I'm a big dumb dummy head. So, if we go across this area, we can see the cast is over here. I swear I practiced for this episode, but that was like a couple weeks ago. Very impressive. Not many could make it up here in such rain. I expect no less from a well-worn traveler like yourself. 
Me. That's stay nice and dry. That feathers repel the rainwater well. And my instrument was designed to withstand extreme moisture. <laughs> when your livelihood revolves around ancient songs, you've got to be prepared for a few raindrops. I know a song about this place. Would you like to hear the ancient verse passed down in this region? Ooh. Excellent. Without further ado. There's a puzzle in this somewhere, but as far as I can tell, it could apply to a great many things. Anyway, may the light shine ever on your path. That's not what you usually say, Cass. You're an imposter! Cass is sus. That's what the cool kids say nowadays, right? 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 <laughs> so yeah, I did remember this was part of a shrine quest, but I didn't actually, actually remember what the trigger of this was. So, we continue on here, and there's something that I want to test with this, because I made a note for myself to try this out, but I never actually did so during my practice playthrough of this game. So I'm curious about something. What are you supposed to do? Just throw a metal weapon right here, and wait for lightning to strike. But we have our own lightning, with Robosa's Fury, so will this work too? Nope, it didn't work. I see how it is. Also, make sure it's a weapon you don't care about, because otherwise you're going to lose it forever. And that's like one of the coolest openings for like a shrine ever. Is Cass over here again? Yeah, he is. Okay, let's go talk to him. Sometimes he'll disappear after he completes shrine quest, but I want to go over here and see if he has anything to say now that the shrine is open. Ah, so there's a shrine in the crag split by lightning. The bubble so ferocious that I worried I might be struck down myself. I say that's worthy of being immortalized in song. Anyway, may the light shine ever on your path. That's the second time you've said that differently. Do you change it every now and then and I just forgot about that? Or are you being more sus than usual? Hmm. It's kind of funny because I think this is like the second Among Us reference that I made throughout this last play. <laughs> Quokka Nata Shrine. A Song of Storms complete. I love the reference in the Shrine Quest, by the way. The Song of Storms is one of my favorite Zelda songs of all time, so yeah, I'm definitely happy that they made a reference to that in this game. Even if the song itself doesn't usually appear in the game, there might be a reference to it beyond this at some point, but I don't actually remember if that's the case. There's a lot of really subtle musical references throughout the game that you wouldn't really notice on first playthrough unless you're like super paying attention to it. Like Zelda's Lullaby, for example, makes an appearance in the horseback theme, which we talked about in a previous episode. But you wouldn't really notice it unless you were looking for it. You have done well to arrive at the shrine. A hero rise to right the wrongs of Hyrule. In the name of God, Sylium, I bestow upon you the spirit of hope. May the goddess smile upon you. And I've taken care of that. The rain has stopped. I believe this is the side. I believe this is the shrine quest that after you complete it, it stops raining so often throughout the region. So if you're wondering about that, now you know the answer. I just hope that's the answer. Because the past couple times I've tried saying that it started raining again. But I've taken care of all that. We're in this video off here. So thank you all so much for watching this episode of the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. The options are ready to go next, and in the next video in the playlist, we'll be continuing our explorations and maybe coming across a whole new town. Oh, there's a dragon down there! Hey, Farouch, how's it going, man? I'm easily distracted. 
You can also explore the region a little bit more and discover one of my favorite side quests across the entire game. You can look for Koroks across the Karen region or ignore everything and go straight for the champion's ballad. That's what I was going to say. I wasn't going to say anything about Calamity again. What were you thinking? Until next time, Lady Gator to you. Oh, yeah. And also, where would you like to go next? That's the outro we're using for the test play.